Some of the, uh, the formulation has basically buried itself probably 65 feet deep in the actual soil. So we have a problem now. The next project sitting out in the panel dome is upstairs in the exhaust outtake. And you're going to also see the, uh, the, the level and the amount of asbestos. A lot of work when it comes to uh, decontaminating it. The main goal will be a clay slate. But it takes time. This is the Titan Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Its mission, deliver a payload to a designated spot on the Earth's surface some 5,500 nautical miles away. Its warhead could level an entire city. And you're probably thinking, okay, that looks like WD-40. Yes, you are correct. That is WD-40. And so what is WD-40 doing in my hand? Let me tell you this right now. These blast doors, in fact, this is the only type of facility where they left the actual blast doors intact. These are like over five ton blast doors. So it required gallons and gallons of WD-40 to actually free up these blast doors over here. But let me tell you this. So what we do is this. We start off with gallons, but um, every day I just continue to spray. Do a bit of this. So when you have a complex was acquired, these flowers tools are basically just like stuck in a particular, in a, in a particular position it is. So check this out now, right? <laughs> this weighs a the same weight as my top, but this actually does more than a few tons. But look at that. I mean, look at the engineering, it's inches. I mean, all intact over here. I mean, this is like Hoover Dam type engineering. There is not a crack in the concrete. So once again, spray it up here. And this is pretty good. So you may know this product is WD-40. In fact, the original name was actually Water Displacement Project 40. See, there was a company in the late 1950s uh, called the Rocket Chemical Company, and they were based in San Diego with three employees. And they were tasked, they were a government contractor, and they were tasked to basically create a formulation or concoction uh, that would be able to coat the missiles uh, as a rust inhibitor so they won't rust in the other cold winters of Colorado, for example. It took them 40 attempts and finally, on the 40th attempt, they came up with the final concoction that we know today as Water Displacement Project 40. So being a government contractor, some of the employees started to like, um, they snuck out some of the product and they started to use it around their own homes. And um, then the automotive industry got hold of the, um, these cans. At that particular point, it wasn't really a product uh, commercially wise. And then this underground uh, swell of popularity of the formulation. And then the, uh, the CEO realized, you know what, I think there's something to this. Outside of the other government, as a, as a government contractor, we can actually commercialize this particular product over here. And that's exactly what they did. So they called it WD-40. WD, WD, WD-40. WD, WD, WD-40. WD-40? Best tool I have. Great stuff. Right now, three in five U.S. households have a can of WD-40. On top of that, one million cans just like this is sold on a weekly basis. Billions of dollars in revenue and now sold in 176 countries. If you want to go back into history, it all started here at these nuclear bases over here. This was actually used to coat the missiles so they won't rust or corrode during the winter months. And now it's a worldwide successful product. So here lies another problem over here, right? So think of this. This place, this tiny one, was actually operational for like three and a half years, about 42 months, let's call it. So we're not coating the missile with this, um, you know, rust inhibitant formula, this concoction. Every month they will coat this missile. Now the missile was about 100 foot, okay, 100 foot tall. Every month, at the end of the month, they will use a power washer and just clean up all the uh, degrees region of the other uh, missile. And then they'll start up again. They'll just start to coat it with WD-40. 42 months of that. Uh, eventually, what I was doing was, in order to discharge the old formula of the missile. So it actually gives a sump pump and then discharge it back to the top side, back to the surface. So we have a problem now. And this problem has been um, 
it was, it was on the tender floor for some time, until about probably 15 years ago. So we've been working behind the scenes with the, with the uh, Department of Defence, and obviously they have an unlimited budget to make sure that the, um, any um, remaining uh, agents of the uh, WD-40, the um, Water Displacement Project 40, is actually removed. So what's happened is, uh, when the sump pump was discharging down the top side over here, uh, some of the, uh, the formulation has basically buried itself probably 65 feet deep in the actual soil. So right now we've actually got injection and monitoring wells set up topside. And what, we, what we've been doing is we've been actually cleaning up the mess the military left back in the day over here. So godsend, but uh, the byproduct was we've got contaminated waste. And we've got the Army Corps of Engineers, and we've been working very closely with them in relation to removing all these uh, degrees or agents or whatever too. This here is 15 years of data, okay? I've got 15 years of data, and I've got all the location of all the wells on the property here. We've got every every piece of data is being recorded where the wells are. We've got intermediate, we've got deep wells, and we've got shallow wells. So this is 15 years of collated data over here. So we're keeping a nice, we just, So every three months, all the wells are monitored and the problem is uh, dissipating over time. But um, just goes to show the other uh, remediation. I mean, remediation is important when you're dealing with a, a particular, um, you know, uh, a complex like this. This is a tidal one. I mean, it's, you know, it's over 150,000 square feet. So there is a lot of uh, contaminated waste uh, that you have to deal with. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun down here, but there is a lot of waste, a lot of contaminants that one needs to attend to, whatever to. So everything here is backed up. We've got 15 years of data, 15 years of records over here. So let's do this right now. Let me take you and show you where all the uh, monitoring and the injection wells are. So these are the, uh, the monitoring and the injection wells. We have shallow, intermediate, and deep wells, all for data collection. And the following chemicals were used at the other Titan 1 complex. That's uh, rocket propellant 1, which is RP1, a kerosene-based missile fuel, uh, lubricant oil, diesel fuel, sodium hydroxide, uh, polychlorinated um, biphenyl, uh, which is the PCBs, uh, mercury, uh, which was actually present in the actual gauges, ethylene glycol, liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen. I mean, these were pretty much uh, remediated uh, from the military back in the days when it was decommissioned. So one of the other next projects in the other in the panel dome is upstairs in the exhaust outtake. And we have a, a license remediation crew that's going to basically work on a particular area where there's four extractors or four mufflers. And that would extend all the way through the, um, the tunnel leading into the, uh, the diesel generators. And uh, all the exhaust fumes will basically pass through these, um, uh, these really thick piping, whatever. I'm going to show you exactly where it is. And you're going to also see the, uh, the, the level and the amount of asbestos in the actual corners because obviously asbestos can handle that, that high threshold of heat, for example. So let's go upstairs, I'm going to put my mask on. Let's do this. You see up there? That's all asbestos in the corners, in the elbows. And you can see here, the one piece, the little, and that debris field. So we have a remediation crew coming in. We're gonna remove all that, up there, as well as the debris field. So, quite a bit. A lot of work when it comes to decontaminating it. Once you the other main goal will be a clean slate. And when I say a clean slate, I mean we're going to use a, a dustless blaster, and the media we're going to use is basically a recycled glass to remove all the other rust and corrosion over here. We're going to just we're going to seal this up. All the piping's going to go with the asbestos, and it's going to get to a point where, with a clean slate, then our architects. The engineers and our Imagineering team, we have a good team of Imagineers and it's all about the, uh, the repurposing, the, uh, the repurposing monetization model. And they'll come in here once we've got a clean slate and we'll be fully decontaminated within the next 18 months. 
it is a tiny one, so obviously it's it's a mammoth. It's the it's the mothership. It's the uh, mother load over here. And that will include the contamination of 17 buildings. Uh, we've already got three completed. Uh, we're discharging water in some. Obviously, we, we're, we're discharging and sort of filtering the water and repurposing that by the means. And once we get the um, so once we get the, uh, the access port of the actual doors open, uh, we're going to crane in a cherry picker or like an, uh, an aerial lift platform. And the reason being is we're going to disassemble it, uh, the mode assembly from the other uh, boom, and we're going to we're going to push it in here, and that'll give us reach to the upper ceiling point of the power dome. See all these acoustic baffles? That'll give us uh, a nice reach. So we're going to set up a platform down the bottom, and this uh, cherry picker, this aerial platform, will allow us to. Uh, reach all the way to the ceiling. That way we can uh, we can blast walls and clean all the uh, all the residue, as well as removing all these acoustic baffles. And these are all contaminated, as you can see here. And the gantry, at that 360 degree gantry over here, with a 25 ton load, uh, we're going to get that working again, which would be great too, because it's um, it's a it's an engineering marvel, and uh, it's, I think it's a, it's a very integral part of the Titan One, that gantry. So that'll be operational again. So loss is going to be happening here. But it takes time. Any permits? When you're doing remediation, you've got to put in a, um, a project design. Uh, a project design basically allows you to get the, uh, the applicable permits. You've got to basically say exactly what you're doing. You've got to detail in greater detail. And then you get the green light, and then the remediation crew can start. So there's an actual process. Each building involves a, um, a project design. So a lot of things happening. This best now might just tell it's better. 850 feet, it's actually a little bit So, here it is, here's A lot of activities going on. I mean, we've got some fantastic uh, content uh, en route. In fact, pretty soon, possibly the following week, we have a special surprise. I've been working on a drone project. We, we shot a, little, uh, a short drone movie. Uh, probably the most amazing, most phenomenal, insane, most wildest drone footage ever, ever produced in a nuclear bunker, in a decommissioned nuclear bunker. So when you see that, you'll be absolutely blown away. But look, I want to share a couple of things too. It's great being part of a, a, a fantastic adventure like a, like a Title One and some of the other nuclear bases too that we're actually renovating and remediating at the same time. But let me tell you, one thing that we don't often discuss is the amount of injuries. I mean, I have fallen down an elevator shaft here. I mean, not long ago, I was walking across the R3 down to the equipment building uh, in Launcher 3 area. And I was walking, I was, I was navigating near the floor beams and um, uh, that area was wet because we, we were discharging water and I slipped and literally I landed on my hip and for the last five months I've had an injury here, in fact it's a, I mean I've had, I had a hematoma and I still have a bulge, uh, <laughs> I still have a bulge uh, for my fire over here so I'm still dealing with that particular matter. But uh, there's been a lot of injuries, a lot of um, cuts. Uh, we're always you know, doing what we can to uh, protect ourselves with lung, you know, using these um, gas masks. I mean, we take precautions. I mean, you know, we, it's, it's just preventing measures. So there is a lot that goes into the, um, the remediation, the demolition work that gets taken here, uh, as well as the uh, even filming, even the filming the activities. We have a lot of fun. We have, a, we have the, uh, the deepest swimming pool in all the northern United States. It's, it's 130 feet deep uh, in the, uh, the missile soil. So we have a lot of fun. I mean, we have divers here. Uh, we've had barbecues down here, so it's been a grand, grand experience. So get ready, next week, possibly the week after, this drone video, he'll be blown away, and uh, you're going to see the, uh, the Nuclear Bunker Living Channel. We're going to change it up, we're going to change our approach, uh, we're going to start inviting a lot more different guests, and a lot more content, a lot more exploration and adventure, as well as demolition, and also the uh, repurposing too, so you're going to see a lot. And we're also going to introduce some of the other nuclear bunkers in the portfolio. So stand by. We love you. And thank you for building the community. Uh, it's growing. And, um, you know, I appreciate your comments. Uh, it's, been, it's been an amazing adventure too. So we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Next time.